Hello guys and welcome to lesson 7 of series 2. This will be the last lesson in this series. As this is the last lesson, I want to draw your attention on certain things we haven't looked at yet. Uh, these are some of the presets we can find within 3D Studio Max. So I'm just going to run through uh, a few different parts of it and I'll try and explain them as much as I can. But then you shouldn't worry because anytime we want to use uh, something on this program, I'll explain it fully. I'm going to go ahead and delete everything I've got here. Maybe reset. So I'm going to start off by going to the create panel and then with the geometry selected right below it, you notice we've got the standard primitives. Now this is a setting we've always used, but as soon as you click on that, it drops down and gives us more options. Now there, there are a lot of different things we can do here. Most of the time we tend to use the standard primitives. So we've got things like box, cone, sphere and all that. But now when you click on extended primitives, we've, we've got a different set of things here. So you can make whatever you want. I use the chamfer box quite a lot, especially when you're making beds or anything with rounded corners. You can create whatever you want with these tools. So as soon as you create them, you can modify them accordingly uh, within your parameters. Now I'm just going to hit F4 so I can display the edges so we, we can see exactly what we're doing. I'm going to go over and make a series of objects, but I'll recommend you take a few minutes or an hour to play around with this section just to understand what other options of preset objects you've got apart from the standard primitives. A lot of them are so different that a creation method, you have to click a couple of times before you actually make what you're looking for. Now, whilst you're making an object, if you do happen to make a mistake or you don't want it anymore, just right click and that delete it. So as soon as you right click, that goes away. But if you want to keep it and obviously you just use your normal left click like so so we've got a few stuff in there so just go ahead and mess about with this and uh, also if you click that again we go over to you've got things like doors windows stairs uh, maybe let me try and put a staircase in there somewhere just select which type of stair you want maybe the spiral just click on that and you've got your stairs made for you so this makes it much easier and it saves you a lot of time because you don't want to be making all these components yourself or downloading them constantly online although we will be providing a library at some point which will contain a lot of the objects but for now uh, what 3d studio max offers really helps you a lot because you can fully customize this add whatever you want to it so you can do that at the center pole so see we've already made quite a lot of changes to it within the past few seconds you can close it box if you want it going down I'll leave it open for now you can go the other way so don't forget a lot of the stuff we're looking at now when it comes to using them, I'll be giving it, I'll be giving a more detailed explanation of exactly what it does. So you can play around with your railings, move it in. Um, so yeah. And go back when you're done. If you want to make another set of stairs, just go ahead and select that. So each each one has a different way to be drawn. Basically, you just need to practice and know how they and know how each one is created or how many steps it takes to make one. So there's no right or wrong way. If you do make a mistake, just Control Z or simply delete it and then go ahead and continue what you're doing. So we've got things like doors, 
um, and windows. Now, we have walls in here somewhere. I think they... Things like walls, you can find them in the AEC extended. Here you can create foliage. So um, you can select whatever you want from there. Oops, a bit too big. Let me just undo that. I'll delete it actually. So go back, select whatever you want to make. Zoom out. You see we've got, we've got a generic palm there. You've got quite a selection in there that you can make whatever you want from that uh, I just press F4 to remove the edges and that's what we have um, now your tree most of your trees will always appear like this when you're editing your project this is just to make it lighter but when you render it should come out as a normal tree and if you're not happy with it appearing that way whilst you're making your objects you can, you can always go ahead and configure it to display right within your within your viewport whilst you work on it so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to do that just select the foliage go to modify and then say and viewport canopy mode you can always say never and that will keep it as normal within your viewport so go back to your create tab again we'll go ahead and look at something else uh, I'll go back to the AC uh, extended I'll make a wall here. Maybe I'm going to use the top viewport for direction. So make a wall like that. And then you can go ahead. It's all connected, so you don't have to worry about the corners. As soon as you're done, just right click and that gets you out of the create mode. Now I'm going to go back to the door. Select that door. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and make, I'm going to try and draw one here and see how that comes up. So maybe that big. Now you notice as soon as I let go, my door is now part of that object. And if I had to open the door, you notice we've actually got a hole in this wall here. So go ahead and open the door a little bit. I'll just flip. I'll just flip this round so yeah there you go and that's how most of these systems work uh, they've been designed in a way that if you put certain even if you had to put a window on this it will do exactly the same and so yeah um, that's that's how it works so I'm gonna go ahead and move from that go back to your create panel with the geometry still selected drop that down we've got compound objects I'm gonna show you something quite important here for example you've got this object and you want to you want to put a hole here let me just go ahead and show you how this works so go to create one more time I'm using this because I don't want that to go away go to create get the standard primitive select the cylinder and just draw something at random in front of uh, this object make it go through that now what we are going to do is try and use this cylinder to create a hole within this other object so just go ahead and and select our original object go over to compound objects one more time and this time we can select the boolean as soon as you do that it now gives us uh, these rollouts here so we can pick the up the upper end B which allows us to either cut a hole or blend them two together so in this case I'm gonna pick this and there you go we've got it's now see-through it's been sliced nicely and we can go out we can go ahead and continue editing it as normal and then you can also I'm um, just I'm just gonna hit undo so we're literally subtracting B from A and that's why we picked B 
whilst we've got our boolean applied to a and as soon as you hit that we've got that going on and now if you had to change that and click it we've got we've done something different we've used our original object to crop uh, this new object here I'm gonna undo that again so you can go ahead and mess around with this. Um, it's important you understand how the Boolean works because you will actually use it quite a lot when making uh, complex products or anything slightly advanced. I'm gonna take that back to where we came from, which is the subtraction. So you can try it out differently. So I'm gonna leave it there and 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 that's important it's very important for you to really go ahead and just uh, have a little play with all these here but as for today's lesson I just quickly wanted to show you some of these and I'll be drawing more attention to every single one of them as you create objects where they have a degree of importance but uh, on the next series I'll be focusing more on things like material and standard rendering by that I mean we won't be using V-Ray or Mentor Ray just yet. I want to show you a few tricks on how to get very good rendering by using standard lighting on 3D Studio Max. But as for today, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next lesson of Series 3. Thank you very much and bye for now.